Hello and welcome to Deusai, where we explore the science of living well as intended. In a previous video, we took a look at people who are curing themselves of seemingly incurable conditions by changing how they ate. You can watch that video by clicking on the link above. What you'll see is that they did this by eating a low carbohydrate or carnivore diet, which shows that these ways of eating are much more than simply a way of losing weight, though they can be good for that as well. And yet another previous video that you can watch by clicking above, we took a look at the long-term health implications of eating this way, of eating a low carbohydrate or carnivore diet. The data isn't very clear. At first blush, it appears that the people who eat this way are actually at slightly increased risk of death. But if you look more carefully, you see that the people who are eating this way primarily come from very high at-risk groups, and by eating this way, they greatly reduce their risk. They end up in a much lower category risk group. So that would suggest that this way of eating is actually beneficial for long-term health. But if you nonetheless believe that there is a long-term risk, many people would say that it's worth it. It's worth it because these people have fairly serious conditions, including obesity, and they would be undergoing treatments and taking medications that are fairly serious, fairly dangerous. And if you weren't to treat them, they would also be at a fairly high at-risk category. For example, people with a body mass index of greater than 40% would be at greatly increased risk of all kinds of death, all-cause mortality, an increase of almost 200%. So in this video, we're taking a look at why doctors would be slow to recommend these kinds of therapies, update their eating recommendations. If you believe everything I have said so far is true, scientists would say that this slow updating of eating recommendations is part of a normal confirmation bias. Now, confirmation bias is the idea that when we believe something, we tend to favor that even when we see evidence indicating that that preconceived notion is actually incorrect. Confirmation bias is a long-time issue among doctors and in making initial diagnoses. We see that the initial diagnosis might be incorrect, and then a doctor is slow to update that recommendation based upon evidence that indicates that the initial diagnosis was wrong. But there are many other examples. If you are a person who likes crime stories, it's fun to take a look at fingerprinting science. If you have somebody who's a fingerprint expert and you tell that person that this set of fingerprints belongs to the bad guy, that fingerprint expert is much more likely to mistakenly say that that person was the culprit, the person who did the bad thing. Isn't that interesting? Even when you look at a science that's supposed to be as precise as fingerprinting, where no two people in the entire world could have the same set of fingerprints, there is still a greatly increased risk of a person making a wrong professional judgment based upon his or her preconceived notions, that confirmation bias. Perhaps the best example of confirmation bias would be a recent study about how people's preconceived notions about vaccines impact how they perceive data on whether vaccines are effective. During the pandemic, people developed very strong opinions about whether vaccines are effective or ineffective or even bad for a person's health. And so this study took a look at almost 4,000 people with these preconceived notions and had them look at fake vaccine data. In some of this fake data, it indicated that the fake vaccine was effective, and in other sets, it indicated that the fake vaccine was not effective. Depending on that person's preconceived notions about vaccines, they were much more likely to discount the information that showed that the vaccine was actually effective or ineffective. They were making mistakes based upon their pre-existing notions about vaccines. Isn't that also interesting? Even when it comes to something as scientific as numerical results about vaccines, people would make mistakes based upon whatever their pre-existing notions were. Yet another interesting study indicated that people who have more expertise in a field are more likely to update their opinions. They did this by taking a look at people who had various degrees of experience within a medical field and asked them to make an initial diagnosis. Then they were given more information that indicated that diagnosis was incorrect. The people with more experience actually updated their information, their diagnosis, more readily. But the opposite may be true for a doctor's paradigm, the way that the doctor views medical science as a whole, or at least a part of medical science, such as how people are supposed to eat. 
The person who coined the phrase paradigm shift noticed that throughout history, there have been many examples of people changing their paradigms, of entire scientific communities changing how they view a particular part of science. We used to think that planets, the sun, and other stars revolved around the Earth. But now we know that's not true, that we're actually revolving around the sun. Yet when presented with these new paradigms that better explain everything around us, the people who are most closely involved with the old paradigm are the last update to the new paradigm. In fact, many of them take it to their graves. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die. A recently published paper argued that low-carb dieting is in fact a paradigm shift. It was published by a lead author who comes from Harvard University, is an MD, PhD, doctor, and researcher. And he was arguing that the current pandemic of obesity that we especially see in the United States and European countries, but really throughout the entire world, is based upon our misperception about how we are supposed to eat food. But don't expect that paradigm shift to occur anytime soon, at least among our current cadre of doctors. In the next video, we'll take a look at whether eating vegetables truly is bad for us. Thanks for watching.